welcome to Boom and Bigs TV. Today we are going to be talking about everything a first time carnival cruiser needs to know. Today I'm going to share some first time cruiser cruise tips. I'm actually going to be bringing my two sisters on their first cruise. So I thought, well, maybe I should share these tips that I have to share with them with everyone. The first thing we're going to mention is the online check-in. So for our cruise, our online check-in opens 16 days before the cruise, being that we're platinum. For the other guests, it's 14 days before the cruise. That might be different for you, but you definitely want to check online to see when your check-in opens up and make sure to do your check-in as soon as possible because that's when you pick your boarding time. So you can't just show up at the cruise port at any time you want. You do have a designated check-in time. So you do get to choose it, but it's first come first serve. So as soon as you can check in, go ahead and pick your check-in time. And it's important that you check in as soon as possible because those time slots will get taken up. So if you're trying to check in and board early, make sure you you get there early, you stay up late till when it's time for you to check in and start checking in then because it's very important to get those slots that you need. Yes, and you can actually sign up for your dining time well before that. So when you book your cruise, look for that as well, the option to pick your dining time. We like to choose the anytime dining so that we can show up at any time that it's open and just wait to be seated. That's easier for us. But they usually have an early and a late dining that might be around 5.45 and 8 p.m. But for us, that's a little bit too restricted. So as I was thinking more about choosing your boarding time, it has a lot to do, to do with if you're flying in, if you're driving, how soon are you gonna be there? You know, so we suggest that you arrive a day before. That's like the golden rule. Like you never know what could happen. You can miss a flight, you can miss your train, you can miss your bus, you could have a flat tire, your car can knock off. So we suggest you arrive the day before. So make sure that you can meet that time because it's very important. Next, we would like to talk about parking. We prefer to park at the port. I can roll my stuff in. When I come out, I can roll my stuff right back out to my parking space. There are a lot of options for parking. Remember, parking is not free. If you're parking right at the port, it is the most expensive, obviously. So for example, in Miami, it's around $20 per day. So a seven day cruise would be $140. So that is kind of high, but it's very convenient. Yes. So your other options would be to find a parking deck nearby that might be seven or $10 a day. And then they offer a shuttle service over to the port. We have done that before and it saved us money when we needed it, but you do have to wait on the shuttle and especially when you're coming home, we've had to wait up to an hour and a half before to wait for the shuttle. When you just got off the ship, you have all of your luggage there. You're sitting there just waiting and waiting and you really want to get to your car so you could start driving home. That is one thing you'll have to deal with if you choose that option, but it is an option if you want to save money. And same thing with the next option, which is you can get a hotel near the port that offers free parking. There are a lot of hotels that will let you park there for free, included in your night stay. And they will also shuttle you to the port and pick you back up. But again, you will be waiting around. I just want to say that it's more expensive to park at the port it's so much more convenient. I can remember us waiting for the shuttle. And we're watching people just go right over with their luggage and get in their car and leave. And, you know, maybe the first two times we watched it, we were like, hmm. Then after we waited for an hour and a half that one time, we decided that was it. We're never going to do that again. But check your budget. If it's in your budget, I suggest 
parking at the port. But like I used to look at it like, okay, if we're spending $120 for a hotel room anyway, might as well park we might for as free. Well park at one that allows you to park there and save the $120, $140 at the port parking. But it is an inconvenience. So just whatever you choose, those are the options. Or of course you could just get dropped off in some way and then not have to worry about the parking. So while I'm thinking about it, let's talk about the cost of hotels in Miami. If you're cruising from there, that is a very popular cruise port. The prices have definitely gone up pretty high for hotels. So you want to start looking for them ahead of time. Maybe look into Airbnbs. On our upcoming cruise, we found a great Airbnb only 15 minutes from the port and she was offering a discount on that. We got lucky because there will be construction going on, but not the day we will be there, but that's why she lowered the price so we got a good deal there. So just be sure to like look into that ahead of time so you're not surprised. And remember, if you're driving, we've always looked maybe an hour or two hours outside of Miami mm -hmm. to try to stay so that we don't mind driving an hour or two that morning, but the price is significantly different. Like, it's yeah. very different. So, look, that's another option to stay a little farther away, maybe not stay in Miami, and you'll save a little money. But Airbnb seem to be a little more cost efficient mm -hmm. versus the hotels. So, but Airbnb, Airbnbs don't shuttle and you can't leave your cars there. So, yeah. It's just something to think about. Like, I like to be on the beach. So I know that's why prices look higher for me when I'm looking up hotels because I want to be on the beach. I want to be in a balcony. I really want to set the vibe for the cruise. So if that means I have to be an hour away from the cruise port and just drive that in the morning, I don't care. So that's why I'll look a little bit up the coast. But it is a little cheaper if you find hotels near the airport. Yes. So... It's up to you. Next, we're gonna talk about the embarkation process. So you've parked, now you're gonna grab your luggage and you're gonna head to the terminal. Well, first you gotta decide whether you're gonna check your luggage or you're gonna carry your luggage on. If you're gonna check your luggage, there are gonna be porters there asking you, would you like to check your luggage? Make sure you have a few dollars where you can tip them for checking your luggage. If you're not gonna check your bags, if you check your bags, you're probably gonna get your luggage later that evening, Some, but make sure you got a carry-on with you. With all the things that you need, maybe if you wanna have a bathing suit, or if you have kids, all the little things that they're gonna need. If you're not checking your bags and you're gonna carry your bags, you just skip that process and you head toward the terminal. So your luggage tags need to be on your bags if you're checking them and you can find your luggage tags when you do the online check-in. You'll have the ability to print them. We actually like to put ours in these little plastic cases so they don't get wet or damaged or torn off yes. and we love using those. And that's also when you would print your boarding passes, which you will need next to get on the ship. So once you've given your bags to the porter, you head to the check-in, you have to have your boarding pass and either a passport or a photo ID and a original birth certificate to check in. And once you get past that process, you will go through security with your remaining bags. Yes. And after that, if they're already letting people on the ship, they'll just guide you to get right on the ship. And if not, sometimes if you get the earliest boarding time, which we like to do, you do have to sit in a waiting area for a little bit of time. But it's okay because you're among the first to get on the ship. You have a lot of room when you first get on because everybody is trying to get on and look around the ship and get to lunch pretty much. I would just like to say that choosing an early boarding time for us is important because you're going to be hungry. <laughs> everyone goes straight to the food. so Usually the buffet. The buffet. So everyone's trying to get on there, grab some guys, whatever. Or, oh, yeah. Or guys, buffet. Burgers really guys burgers. Guys burgers or on the buffet. And 
Everyone wants to just eat something and, and, and bog down until their rooms are ready. Mm -hmm. So it's important to try to get on there as soon as you can because the line and the elevators can be very serious. Yeah, that's a good point. The rooms are not usually ready until the afternoon, maybe around 1, 1 1.30 until you can get into your room. Unless you're a platinum or up guest, you can get in your room just long enough to set your stuff down. But everyone else, you have to wait until your room is open. So make sure you pack your carry-on light. And if you do decide to roll on all of your luggage, you will have to hold on to it until later in the afternoon when your room is ready. So just keep that in mind. And just to reiterate, platinum and up, you do have access to your room. You can go straight to your room, set your luggage. Now you can't hang out, but you have access to set your luggage in your room and go back onto the, out into the boat to yeah. where do whatever you want to do. That's a perk that platinum and diamond mm -hmm. guests have. So remember, you can take your stuff straight to your room. Yeah, and they don't like to announce that or anything. For some reason, we don't know why they don't tell all platinum yeah. and diamond guests. But it is allowed. But I don't think even all of the staff know. But we have just got on, opened up the door to the hallway, even though it says it's closed, and walked right to our room, set our stuff down. If we see one of the workers in the hallway, we just say we're platinum and up, we're setting our stuff down, and then we go back out and they say, okay, they're they're kind and you know we're in and out of their way really quickly. This video is for first time cruisers, so you won't have to worry about yes, that for a while. Sorry guys. But, but later be, you're be gonna some. be one of you're gonna be platinum. And yeah, you're gonna eventually. be able to take your yeah, 75 and up sailing days, you'll be able to do that. Yes. But some of you watching might be already platinum, in, in case you didn't know that. So that was just a little token for you guys. Yeah. There's one more thing I would like to say about your check-in documents and your passports and your identification. As a rule of thumb for us, we make sure before we walk out of the door of our home, we lay eyes on all our documents. When we leave the hotel, we make sure we check, we lay eyes on all our documents. It's very important that you do not leave any of your documents because you will not get on the boat. Yeah, they will not let you. You will not get on the boat. They're not going to make an exception for you. Mm -mm. You will not get on the boat. Yeah. So make sure you check, pre-check, post-check, <laughs> check, check, check those yeah. documents for everyone. Yeah. On your cruise. And make sure you put them in your carry-on or your purse or on your body so you don't end up giving them to the porter. Yes. And then you're like trying to run them they, down. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Make sure. Just make sure. Yeah. It's a very, it's very important. Next, we're going to talk about the sign and sale card, which everyone gets one and you get it when you get access to your room. So this will be your room key and your payment for everything on the ship. So you will set up your money account during your online check-in or when you get on the ship, you can go to guest services and put cash on your card if you would like to or you can just pre-set up to have your debit or credit card attached to it. If you're on a tight budget, cash is good because you can't spend no more than what's on there. Yeah. And however you set it up, whatever works for you, works for you. You're gonna need your sign and sale card to get on and off the boat at each and every port. And you're gonna need your ID. So, or your passport. So just keep those with you all the time. When you're getting off the boat, you're gonna Yeah, need like at the destinations. At your destination, yeah. Being that we're talking about money, we might as well talk about having a little cash. Um, it's important to have a little bit of small bills so that you can tip your bus driver when you're in port or you want to, if you want to tip your houseman that's cleaning your room, if you want to tip the waiter a little extra, wherever you want to, Tip is good to have small bills because it's very courteous because these guys go above and beyond yeah. to make sure that you receive great service. So as it's another what rule of thumb to make sure you have a little cash to tip. Yes, but don't worry, you're not gonna have to be walking around tipping every person yeah. that services you the whole entire time. 
because that's not actually customary to do. That's why they have the gratuities that are billed to you at the end of your cruise, Yes. which is around $16 per day per person now. And that's split up among the different people that serviced you either in the dining room or the person that is cleaning your room. So you can prepay those when you book your cruise or you can just let them bill you at the end of your cruise. So that's up to you, but that is something that is charged to you. So if you're happy with that for the gratuities, you can do that. And you can also choose to tip extra at the end of your cruise to anyone that you want to give extra to. And then the little bills for like people at the destinations that yes. Yeah, like taxi drivers and things like that. But the people that are actually on the ship, your built-in gratuity is pretty much covers yes. that. Well, when you get a drink, things like that, you can write in you extra can write tip in extra if you tip. want to. But you don't have to walk around with cash yeah. tipping people your whole cruise. No, you don't have to do that. Yeah. If you feel someone was extra special, you can write in a better tip. For them, or if you feel like you need to slide a, a ten dollar bill to this person for something they did, it's it's okay. Yeah. It's not customary to hand out tips on the boat the whole time. Like, it's not customary, but I mean, I feel free if yeah. you want to throw an extra five or ten his way or her way. Feel free. It's, I don't, yeah, they're not gonna get fired for it. No, they'll be happy, but just so you don't have to worry about yes. while you're trying to enjoy your vacation, you don't have to be thinking about pulling out cash yes. your whole time there. You know, you can increase the gratuity at the end if you loved your service. Or you can always, like, write it in. Because when you buy those drinks, mm -hmm. they every time you sign, it's a little thing that says tip. Yeah. You can always just tip that way. I think it's more customary for people to just write in a tip for the guys. Mm -hmm. And another thing about tipping, it keeps them coming back. When <laughs> you write in that tip, that waiter is going to be back in 10 minutes. Yeah. No matter what kind of party is going on, he's going to continue to come back and because you're tipping them. They're going to make sure you're getting the. You're not going to wait for a drink. They'll probably be looking at your drink from over there or her cup's hand when you're not coming to get <laughs> All right, now we're going to be talking all about the drinks. So what's included, what's not, and all of that good stuff. So included in your cruise fare is water at any time you need it. There's always a water station, tea and juice at breakfast, and coffee. So that's going to be like your basic coffee, not the specialty coffee. You would yes. have to pay for that. Soda, there's a fee for that. You can buy individual sodas. There's also soda machines that you pay per time of use on many of the newer ships. Or you can buy the different packages that they offer. So they have different packages for just soda and coffees and other packages for alcoholic drinks. So for example, the alcohol package is around $60 per person per day and all members in the cabin have to purchase it. So if there's two of you, you both have to pay $60 mm -hmm. per day and you have to get it every day of the cruise. And that covers you for 15 alcoholic drinks a day. So. It is very expensive, but if you are a heavy drinker, then you might want to look into it. Or you can just pay per drink as you go. So those are some options you have when it comes to drinks. So for the soda, everyone is allowed to bring on a 12 pack of cans of sodas. It has to be cans, no bottles allowed, and you're allowed to bring those on board. So that could save you a little bit if every person in your cabin brought on a 12 pack of soda. You're also allowed one 750 milliliter bottle of wine on with you as well. And then there's also the option to pre-purchase drinks to be sent to your room. So I'm going to show you guys that on my computer right now.
So I have the Carnival website pulled up here and you can see this is the section where you can pre-order things before your cruise, including shore excursions, drink packages, internet plans, Pixels photos packages, gifts and stateroom decor, specialty dining, cruise cash and spa and salon. And a lot of times you do get things a little cheaper if you order them before your cruise. So here's your options for bottled water. If that's something you like, you can get a 12 pack for $9.95. These used to be $5, but I still like to have one in the room, but I also do bring like a 32 ounce, or maybe it's even bigger than that, stainless steel container that I keep filled up with ice water for soda. If you really don't want to worry about carrying on a case of soda, you can purchase six packs of sodas. As you can see, they're $10 each, which is higher than you would pay in a grocery store, but still cheaper than you would pay per soda if you were ordering them from the bar, which I think is $3 a can, maybe four. I can't say positively, but it's more than it is here. So if this appeals to you, just remember this is an option. You can also pre-order beer and wine as well. And I believe for seven night and up sailings, liquor bottles as well. So here are a few options to have beer and wine sent to your room. Angry Orchard four pack for $24. So you see the prices really aren't that great and they actually used to be a lot cheaper. This is something my friends and I used to do when the prices were quite a bit cheaper to pre-order this. So this is something that's delivered to your room and you can drink while you're on board. They also have other things you can buy like flowers or room decorations if it's somebody's birthday, gift ideas and things like that that you can have delivered to your room as well. So take a look at that if you're interested. Okay, I have a few tips for drinkers. My number one tip is if you drink heavy, you need the drink package. If you're on a casual drinker, you don't. You're probably gonna not spend as much drinking. There's always people walking around trying to sell you drinks constantly, so they look nice. I don't drink, but the drinks look nice. Um, and they're gonna, you're gonna be in the moment, you're gonna have some drinks. I suggest that on port days, just a suggestion, there's no rules against you drinking on the island. There are bars everywhere, and you always walk right through a liquor store. So you can always purchase a bottle and make your own drinks versus going to sit at a bar ordering drinks. Just buy your bottle and make your own drinks on the island. So it's just a little small tip for some of the drinkers. Next, I would like to talk about the mustard drill. The mustard drill is mandatory. You must go to it. It's easy and simple. You just, they're gonna direct you once you aboard the ship to your monster station. They're, they're gonna do maybe a five minute safety meeting about using your life vest, the sounds you're gonna hear for uh, emergencies and where you should go. Because if everyone doesn't go, the ship don't move. You're gonna hear them calling people, report to your monster station, please report to your monster station. If you haven't went to your monster station, Report to your monster station. So yes. it's important. Just go and get it over with. It takes, you might be there 10 minutes because they're waiting for more people to come in. Once they get about 20 people, they do it and you're out of it. Yeah. But we've also had times where you literally just walk up to them. They scan your boarding pass. Yes. They ask you if you know how to put on a life vest. You say yes. And they say Thank you, Thank and then you. walk away. So yeah. it depends. It was different for us on different ships, but the muster station is actually where you would report to if there was an incident where you needed to vacate the vessel. For so, any emergency with the ship, yeah, you would be re have to report to your muster yeah. station. So it's important that you go and know where your muster station is. Yeah, it is because. We hope that never happens, and usually it doesn't, but you do need to know where to go at least. So that would be your meeting station if you ever 
heard the alarm and they said everyone head to your muster station to debark. They usually tell you that if you're in your cabin, you can grab warm clothing and leave everything else behind. And also, your muster station is going to be on your sign and sale card. Mm -hmm. So you will know where it is. Yes. So the way they used to do it is a specific time. Have everybody meet at the muster station and wait until every single person is there and stand in front and talk about it, which ends up taking an hour sometimes for everyone to get there. But the new style they have where you just, as soon as you get on the ship, you go to it, you check in, and then you go about your cruise. But the problem with this is that some people aren't going. Yes. And they have to keep on coming on the announcement and telling them to go. And hopefully those type of people won't ruin it for everyone and go back to the old way because the old way is so bad. Yes. This new way is so cool. It's so convenient. You're mm -hmm. in there. You're out of there. Enjoy your cruise. Yes. It's like the, the mustard drill used to like. Hold you up. You like we would dread doing that part. Like oh, and it's we got to like go. Four and... o'clock and you're ready to unpack your stuff. Yeah. for a nap or something. And you're like shoulder to shoulder with people for like thirty five minutes, and yeah. they're on the loudspeaker doing the mustard drill. We're like oh, <laughs> it's like oh god. It's, but yeah. the new way is so cool and easy. Mm -hmm. So please. Go to your master station. Please, please. go. Yeah, just please get on just the ship go and, and go. Get like, a scan. And you're out that's of That's the first thing you do. Get on the ship and go to the muster and just get it out of the way. So next we're gonna talk about Wi-Fi and communicating with people at home. So when you're in the middle of the ocean, you don't have your regular cell service or data, as you might expect. So you will want to put your phone into airplane mode, but you'll still be able to use Wi-Fi if it's an airplane what mode. So there are Wi-Fi packages, it's not free. There's different levels of package depending on what you would need it for. I can pull those up here for you. So the current prices for the Wi-Fi plans is $12.75 per person per day for the social plan, which just allows you access to social media platforms. Next is your value Wi-Fi plan, which is $17 per day. You get most of the internet besides streaming services, and it's not that fast. And next you have your premium level Wi-Fi, which is the fastest and does include the video and streaming options as well in that plan. And these prices are typically less before you get on your ship. If you have an iPhone, you can still FaceTime. Oh, yeah. I don't know how, but if my brother are, FaceTimes me all the time. If you're on the Wi-Fi, you can FaceTime if you got an iPhone. So. Yeah. And you could use Facebook Messenger or some other type of video call service if you don't have an iPhone. So if you have the premium Wi-Fi package, you can do streaming and use Facebook. Um, video calls like that so and remember it's not gonna be Wi-Fi like at home mm -mm. you're gonna have sir you're gonna have Wi-Fi but it's not gonna be super fast you, it's gonna be some buffering and all that stuff so just don't ex don't don't expect to have fast internet like you have at home it's, it's nowhere it's nothing like that it's, yeah you're gonna have it that's all I can say. You're gonna have it, but yeah. it's not gonna be what it's not gonna be great, but it's it works. Yeah. And the main reason we get it is because we have our eBay store, so we have to be communicating with customers. But we usually get one package and then we take turns signing yes. into it because that's allowed. It's just only one device at a time can yes. be signed in. So I might have it for a few hours and then he'll have it for a few hours. That way we can both kind of like check in our emails or talk to people or whatever we want to do. Also, I, I think you should know that on the Carnival Hub, once you download the Carnival Hub app, there's a chat plan that you can pay $5 a day. So if, it's, if you have multiple family members, you guys can chat, text back and forth mm -hmm. to each other to communicate. If you don't have, if you need to like communicate, you guys are not going to be together all the time, $5 a day allows you to chat and communicate with your family members 
and whoever need it. So yeah, and you remember, don't all have to get the Wi-Fi for no, that. No, you so, don't have to have Wi-Fi for yes, that. Yes. So. It's just a $5 a day chat to be able to text back and forth through the hub with your family members. Mm -hmm. So that's a little more affordable for if it's 10 of you guys on the cruise. Mm -hmm. It's only, what, if you're on a five-day cruise, it's only 25 bucks. So per person. To talk so, the whole time, yeah. To be able to communicate. So yeah. it's pretty cool. So, yeah, and that system works pretty good, but sometimes the messages took a while to get to each other, we noticed, but usually yeah. it was pretty good. But yeah. it's better than leaving notes on the door and hoping the other person <laughs> sees it in time to meet you somewhere. Yes. Yeah, so I've yes. been on a cruise with 30 people before, and most of us didn't get Wi-Fi. I know I didn't. I, it was a long time ago. I had way less money back then, so... We were relying on like calling each other's room, hoping the person was in there or leaving a note on their door or what worked out for us in that case was that we all had the same dining time and we agreed to always meet at our dining at the every single night so that we could at least be all together at that time. So you can actually call home from your room, but I think it's like $2 a minute maybe more to do that but that is an option so if you don't get the wi-fi and you really need to call someone you do have that option they can call you as well but it's for emergencies only and you would have them call a number i can find that for you and they need to tell your ship and your room number and it doesn't put them through to you it just has a message delivered yes. to you to call them so that would be good for you to give to a family member in case there was an emergency that they needed to contact you for, they would be able to. Okay, so talking a little bit more about the Carnival Hub. So that's the Carnival app, and you will use this throughout your whole cruise. You can use this without purchasing a Wi-Fi plan. You always have access to the hub. And that's where you're gonna find your schedule of events so you know what's going on around the ship at all times. We actually have a video from the Carnival Celebration where we showed the entire schedule of everything that was offered on the whole cruise. Yes. So definitely take a look at that if you wanna get an idea of things because we're not gonna go over everything in this video because it will be so long. But, you know, it's things like bingo and your show times and... Everything. Yes. Like, you're going to want to check that every morning. You can see what's going on all week, actually. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's easy for you to be able to plan your day, what yes. you would like to do today, and schedule everything around mm -hmm. the events that you would like to do. So it's important to make sure you have the, the carnival hub. Yes. And most of the things on the schedule are free, included in your cruise. So yes. there are a few things you pay extra for, like bingo, things like that. But mostly everything is included. So definitely take advantage of that and go to the shows. Enjoy yourself. Especially the comedy shows. Yeah. You're not going to miss on the comedy shows. Yeah. They are great. Yes. Family Feud is really fun, too. And another thing about the, camp the comedy shows, they have... Rated R and they have PG, mm -hmm. so most com most comedians have a show for that family friendly, and then they have the adult only or the adult eighteen plus show. Mm -hmm. So there's you can also take your kids to some of the shows. Yes. Also with the Carnival Hub, you can check in for your dining. So when you're ready to go to dinner, you check in. It will tell you how long of a wait you have, so you don't have to actually walk to. The dining room and stand in line and wait because sometimes you can get in right away other times you might have to wait an hour but at least you can go do something else until yeah. they alert you that your yeah. table's ready yeah. yeah 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 there's other stuff you can do on there as well but we're not gonna get into that in this video but definitely check out your carnival hub you actually don't have access to it until the day of your cruise sometimes when you're waiting to board your cruise you can go ahead and get into it and look around but unfortunately you can't see it the day before or anything like that so while we're talking about this i'm not going to go too much into detail about it but once you get in your room you can do a lot on your tv oh yes because the like, hub is on the TV. the hub is on the tv mm -hmm. so that you can see how much money you're spending <laughs> 
You oh, can yeah, see you your see whole your schedule. You can you can check everything. And your photos. You can see your photos that you've taken. Oh, it's the TV is awesome now. They have everything mm -hmm. connected to it, so the it's it's amazing. Well, so. at least on the newer ships, we're not sure newer. if they've done the same with the older ships. Maybe they have, but um, I'm not sure. So yes. we just got off the Mardi Gras and the celebration. So those are the two of the newest ships. So that's what we're kind of going off of. Yeah. Like we we're going on the horizon in about three weeks. So we don't know what that class ship has to offer yet, but you will know soon, as soon as we get off. Next, we would like to talk about the sail away party. Hey, don't miss it. Normally, all sail away parties are awesome. Everyone gets into it. Everyone's ready to start their vacation, and it's a nice party. Try to get an idea of who the the dancers and the exciting people on your cruise are going to be because the celebrate party, they start doing dances. Maybe and that's you. It might be you. Yeah. So remember, the celebrate party is always awesome. On so, the Lido deck. On the Lido deck. Don't miss it. Make sure you're there. Yeah. And it's so nice to watch yourself sailing away from the land like, oh, this is what we've been waiting for. And here we go. So... It's one of the best feelings of your cruise besides the the gangway walk. The gangway walk for her is the 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 her most her favorite part. Yeah. Like she gets emotional walking the gangway going up. To I the cry boat. almost every time. She cry almost every time. Like we're all we're 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 doing it. We're getting up there yes, on the boat. Because I'm so grateful. It's just I don't know. Yeah. So. She loved that part, so. Yeah. The sail away party obviously happens while you're sailing away, which is usually around 5 p.m., but differs depending on your cruise. But there are several other parties with themes throughout your cruise as well. So you'll want to check the schedule for your cruise to see what it has to offer. But different themes of parties that we've experienced on Carnival Cruises are the 80s glow party yes a new style of tiki fest party which on the cruise we were on it wasn't that popular i don't know if it was because it was windy that night or what but people were wearing like the uh, the hawaiian like yeah. you know the the little yeah. things you know they wear the, the pineapples and stuff like yeah. that and they dance and they Put a little thing around their neck and then they, they go up under the thing and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so, that. What's that called? Not hulu dancing? It was a well, you can hulu fest. dance up there. Yeah. After the white night party, they typically carry that over to the nightclub, which we didn't talk about. There is actually a nightclub. Sometimes the comedy club turns into the nightclub. Or sometimes there's just a designated nightclub, depending on your ship. And you will be partying. And it's every night, I think 11 o'clock, mm -hmm. until. So, if you like dancing and you like clubbing, it's, it's one there for you. Every night. Yep. So, if you want to bring different outfits for the different themes of parties, go for it. That's lots of fun. And something else you'll want to bring an outfit for is the elegant night or nights. So depending on the length of your cruise will determine if you have one or two elegant nights where you can dress up to go to dinner and also take pictures and it can be really fun. You can wear anything from a full ball gown and tuxedo or dress down a little and just do a casual button up and a casual dress. It's up to you. Fellas. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to see it all. Mm -hmm. You're going to see dresses with tails. A lot of times there are wedding parties on the cruise. So you might see coordinated attire. Mm -hmm. Fellas, I, I, I suggest you bring it. Bring that blazer. Bring that bow tie. Bring those shoes, those real fancy shoes. It's going down. You're going to see people dressed up and you're going to be like, Man, I should have brought my this or that, you know. So I'm gonna show some examples of things we've worn in the I'm past. Gonna, yes, we're gonna show a few examples of some of the things that we've worn in the past mm -hmm. 
We don't dress up as much now, but it's good to bring it sometimes, just to, you know, bring it. I suggest you bring it. Yes. And if you're going to be taking photos, that's a great time yes. to take photos. A lot of people are taking photos those nights. So there, yes. <laughs> there are photographers set up. All over. All over with different backdrops you can choose. And this is every day. So you can get photos taken throughout your cruise. They even have them set up when you get off your cruise. So there's plenty of photo opportunities. But just remember that you obviously do have to pay for the photos that you like. And now on the newer ships, you can look through them before they even print them. The older ships, they print all of them out and you have to choose and decide which ones you want to throw away and which ones you want to buy. And the eight by 10 is around $22 per photo. So just keep that in mind when you're having fun and doing all those poses with all those outfits that you're probably going to want a lot of the photos because they do a really good job. They're actually professional photos and they look awesome. And we can show you some of the ones we've got as well because we've got some really awesome photos from there. So you definitely want some, but just keep that in mind. $22 each. Also, on Elegant Night, there are a lot more elegant backdrops yeah, throughout the week and each and every night they have backdrops up some of them are more boat themed like with the yeah, boat in beach. the background beach theme mm -hmm. stuff like that but on elegant night they bring it they bring the most elegant backdrops they have they have the setup set to pianos they have you can take those wonderful family photos or those couple photos that you want to take, they're going to be beautiful. You're going to be so lost looking at photos like, which one do we choose? Yes. Like, we can't get them all. And they offer packages. Several enough, you can get a certain amount of photos. So remember, bring it. Bring it for these photos because you're going to love. They got white backgrounds. They got black shimmer backgrounds, gold shimmer backgrounds. So... You're going to be able to find backgrounds to coordinate with your colors. So no matter what colors you wear, there's going to be a background for you that you're going to love. And they, Oh, my God. They have the stairwell. You're going to be able to take your own photos on these staircases that are going to be awesome. Yeah. So remember, bring it. That's true. That's a good point because there are so many beautiful spots to take your own photos around the ship so if you want to take pictures of each other as well obviously you will but just so you know like you can take some pretty good quality pictures on your own as well next we would like to talk about seaside theater so not every boat has a theater outside but the majority of them do i think yeah and there are they play movies that are Maybe just left the theater. Sometimes they're in the, they're in the theater. So what I do is stop watching movies maybe two months before the cruise, so that maybe something that I not watched I can watch it on the boat. So they have real good movies. So if there's something that's in the theater that you want to go and see and you haven't seen yet, maybe you know hold off. Because it might be on the boat. Yeah. It's a fun experience to sit out on the deck and watch a movie in the middle of the ocean outside. It can get a little breezy at night, so you might want to bring a jacket yes. or like a hoodie or even a blanket I have brought before and was really comfortable out there. So we like to get a snack and bring it out there. Sometimes the pizza and just mm -hmm. sit out there and chill. It's like, It's great. So on every ship that I'm aware of, you'll have a spa where you can purchase things like massages and other services. And there is usually a free sauna, which I love to take advantage of. It's really nice to just go in there and get hot and sweat and relax. And some of these ships have an ocean view while you're in the sauna, so that's awesome. And then, of course, you have the gym if you want to keep up with your exercises. And a lot of ships, maybe all of them, 
have a jogging track outside on the top deck if you want to just enjoy the ocean and get your exercise as well. So one thing you may or may not care about is the raffles. So if you look on your Carnival Hub, you'll see different raffles that they do for things like jewelry or spa deals. So if you want to try to win stuff, you want to show up at the times that they tell you to and join the raffle. Oh. Um, next, I would like to speak about the kids camp, the daycare. Next, we're going to talk about Camp Ocean, which is for the kids. It's like a daycare. It's for kids ages 2 to 11, and they do break the kids into ages of 2 to 5, 6 to 8, and 9 to 11, and they do different activities and have a lot of fun, and this is included in the cost of your cruise so free you don't have to pay for it so pretty awesome if you want the kids to do something else while you are doing some adult stuff they also have a night owl service for those later activities that you might want to do and for the older kids, they have Circle C for ages 12 to 14. This is an area that they can go and hang out and play games, and there's Wi-Fi and activities that they can do and have fun together. And again, it is included in the cost of your cruise. And for the older teenagers, ages 15 to 17, there is Club O2, and this is more about doing things that they choose to do, like watching movies, listening to music, dancing, and other activities there. And of course, they can meet and hang out with friends. So they do have something for your kids of all ages. Our next tip is to research your ports. So all the places that you're going, make sure you research what there is to do there because some ports are more entertaining than others some are pretty much just some shops and then you have to leave the port area to do anything else and some have more to offer like a free pool and chairs uh, some have a beach some don't so it's important to know what's there before you just go because honestly at some places it's really not that fun if you're just planning on staying in port so make sure you look into that this is a great time for you to subscribe to boom and bigs because we have videos on a lot of these ports yeah we really do so you can get a more in-depth yeah look at what some of these ports have to offer I would so make say sure you most. click that like and subscribe button thank you very much i would say most most Caribbean ports we have a video about. Yes. I'm not going to say all because th there's probably some that we don't have. Actually, I know there is. So it's most Caribbean ports we have a video about. So definitely check those out on our channel if you're going to any of those ports so you can see what's there and get some ideas. There are shore excursions offered through your cruise line that you should look into to see if there's any of those that you want to do. We actually have a full video going into detail on how to pick your shore excursions and the other options. So we're not going to talk too much about that in this video, but you do have plenty of options when it comes to what to do at your destination. Also, since we're speaking about this right now, I would like to bring to your attention that some ports require a tender boat. So you're not, you're gonna anchor a little a little ways from the actual island and you're gonna take a boat, a tender boat over. So if you're gonna be taking a tender boat, you're probably gonna be in line a little while the boat fills up and once that one leave, another one pulls up. And just remember, you might be having to take a five, or 10 minute boat ride to get yeah. to the island. And especially places like Half Moon Cay and Princess Cay, they are both beautiful carnival owned islands where I love those type of islands because usually your lunch is included. Yes. And just, it's not a whole bunch of people trying to sell you stuff. There's a beautiful beach and they keep the water very nice because they're not pulling the boat so close into the shore. When you go out on your excursions, 
and you come back from your excursions, when you try to maximize all your time on the island, that's great. But remember, when you get back on the boat and 3,000 other people just got back on the boat at the same time, there are going to be lines for the elevator. There's going to be lines at the food. So what we try to do is sometimes we try to beat people back to the boat so we can yeah. go ahead and eat yeah. and get our stuff taken care of because we already know that. This line is about to be down there somewhere. So yeah, depending just, on what we did that day. Yeah, we do. And because a lot of times, being that we're vegan, we can get the best food options during lunch. Yes. There's usually more vegan options for lunch for some reason. And there's Blue Iguana, Blue Iguana Cantina, which I like to get back on the boat so I can get that. Or if there's mm -hmm. a Mongolian walk, those things are only open at lunch. So you got to get it before 3 o'clock. Also, um, first time cruisers, remember that you're you're gonna have to stand in some lines sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, not, that but it's much, not that but it's not yeah. that much. Like if you on those bigger boats, like there are lines, but there's so many different places to go and eat. Like it just depends on what it is. It's the newer boats have more restaurants that's free. Yeah, and the older boats is more buffet. But the older boats buffets are awesome compared to the new boats. Yeah, the new boat so buffets. The new boats buffets are very small, but yeah. you you got fifteen different restaurants you can choose to go eat yeah. from. Also, so I I can see why it's so small. Yeah. But uh, on the older boats, they have more options on their buffet. So. Yeah. Remember, sometimes the line might be a little bit, but it goes pretty pretty small. And like the newer boats. You're going to stand in line for any show because yes. they honestly, in my opinion, just have too many people on the ship for the number of shows that people are trying to go to. So sometimes you might have to wait in line for like an hour, whereas the older boats have less people and there's less lines. So, you know, the older boats and the newer boats have their... Pros Pro. and cons, yes. of course, but that's another thing you can watch on our channel because we do have some of the... Actually, we have videos of the oldest boat on the water mm -hmm. and the newest boat on the water. So you can compare the differences there. We don't have every single ship in the fleet, obviously, but we do have a lot of different. So maybe even if your ship is in the same class as one of the videos that we've done, that can still be helpful for you. Also, I would just like to say when choosing a, a shore excursion, Make sure you compare your shore excursions because some of the same shore excursions come with different options. Yeah. The same excursion might come with beach and lunch for a little bit more versus this might just come with a tour. This one might come with a tour and lunch and this one might come with a tour, beach, and lunch. And this one might have drinks and as well this one might have drinks so yeah. this this one might just have a tour but you get free drinks the whole time so yeah. make sure you compare your excursions before you choose one and figure, find the one that best suits your needs and the next thing we want to talk about is the food so in case you didn't know most of the food on a cruise is free or included in your cruise fare so once you've paid for your cruise you've paid for your food and that includes the buffet your main dining experience and sometimes other restaurants as well depending on what ship you're on so unless you're doing a specialty dining or other upcharge food which depending on the ship, there's different places that do charge for food, but there is plenty of stuff to eat and enjoy yourself. That's free. That's free, including um, and now I believe there is a fee for Third. some, if not all room service. Um, I believe there's a small fee for that, or there might be some free items, but the pizza is free and that's available most hours the ship is operating. Sandwiches. Yes, and in the main dining, they did add now that if you get your third main entree, you pay $5. But first of all, most people don't eat a third main entree, but if you do, $5 for that for that is nothing. When you go to main dining, don't expect 
large portions. That's true. You're going to receive small portions. So, nine out of ten times when we go to main dining, we hurry up and get out of there so we can catch the buffet before it closes yeah. because we're still hungry. So, it's an experience. The food is delicious. But also remember, you might want that third entree because actually the portions are they are kind of small. So, unless you fill yourself up with a bunch of sides like I do. And like for us, when we go to main dining, we usually don't know what we're getting because for vegans, they have the chef's choice option, which you don't know what it is until it comes out. So... You don't even know yeah. whether you're going to like it. They no. might bring you an eggplant and, and you, you hate eggplants. Yes, so. that's happened to us. We <laughs> so. waited like an hour for this. Ital we knew it was going to be Italian, but it came out just an eggplant dish with a lot of oil, no noodles, and we didn't even like it. So, But at least you'll know what you're getting from your menu. But. Also, I thought I should let you know, if you are with a large party of people, Make sure you let them know that you're ahead of time that you're with a large party mm -hmm. so that they can make a space. They can have a specific place for you guys because most tables only hold eight, bigger tables hold eight, ten people. Mm -hmm. So they will make a, they will accommodate you if it's 15 of you guys or 20 of you guys. So make sure you let them know, hey, we're coming in. We're going to have a large party tonight. Um, we're coming in at 8 o'clock. Um, could you have a place for us? And they will accommodate you. No problem at all. This, it's just it's, it's, it's customary it, to let them know that you're coming with 20 people to dinner tonight. So what they did for us on a cruise a long time ago when there was 30 of us in our party, ahead of time, we let the cruise line know. We linked all of our rooms together that we are a party of 30. We had the same time dining. I believe we had the late dining. And they had an area for us every night. It was the same area. We knew exactly mm -hmm. what table. And being that there was 30 of us, they just that was our area for every night at 8 o'clock. We knew exactly where to go. And they knew we were always going to be together. So if you have a really big party, try to set that up in advance. Because they do accommodate you. But if you yes. try to just show up, you might not get seated together. You might wait a while to get yes. seated together. Uh, next, we're going to talk about Facebook groups. So typically, there is a Facebook group that's been created for your cruise. A lot of our cruises, we've been able to go and type in the name of the ship and the actual date of our sailing, and there has somebody has started a group. So sometimes it's fun to join the groups, yes. and you can get to know some people ahead of time. You can get excited together. You can talk about your shore excursions and who's doing what, and sometimes there's meetups and group pool, casino stuff, or whatever you want to arrange with each other, talk about cruising ducks. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. but We didn't talk about the ducks. <laughs> We're going to talk about the ducks. Yeah. Next. But the Facebook group is fun because you form a togetherness with all these strangers that's going on the boat at the same and it's it keeps you so excited. Like you can go on and be like, oh, go and watch such and such as video. Go and watch Boom and Big's video about packing. Watch Boom and Big's video about cruise essentials. Um you can share our channel with everyone because everyone has questions all the way up until like in the group you will hear people saying have you got your room yet and you and the cruise is in like three days like you will hear some of the most amazing the craziest things but it's fun yeah. it's like you're constantly in the loop yeah. with everything that's going on with all of these different people that's it's, it's real yeah. nice. It's and then, real like, nice. The day before the cruise, you see people like showing them at the airport or checking into yes. the hotel and like got my room. Yeah, and even up until boarding, you see people like I'm on the ship or yes. I'm sitting here waiting and like it's it's kind of fun. It's fun. It's real fun yeah. just to be part of a, such a large group of people that's all doing the exact same thing on the exact same day in exact same place. Yeah. It's fun. And if there hasn't been a group created for your cruise, you can create the group. But yes. People will join it. People will join. Believe me. Yes. Next, we would like to talk about the cruise ducks. <laughs> so, 
Maybe some of you guys might be familiar with seeing people with ducks in their jeeves. The rubber ducks. The rubber ducks. Well, on the on the cruise on the well on the cruise ship, there's actually a thing, a duck thing, where you search for ducks and you hide ducks. But oh my God, when I tell you this duck game, it's amazing. I spent the whole cruise, my last cruise, searching for ducks. Yep. It's that fun. Once you find one, it's over. You're never going to stop looking for ducks. I couldn't do anything without looking for a duck. Everywhere at time I walked around the boat, I'm looking up and down and low. And I'm just constantly searching for ducks. I was getting up at 4.30 to walk the boat to search for ducks. Yeah, because people will hide them all throughout the cruise. Like, they yes. won't just do it on the first day. It'll be, like, throughout the cruise. And we do have a video of our last ship finding ducks. So you can see and get a few ideas for examples of if you want to bring and hide ducks, you usually make a tag. And I can show you that as well. Yes, the duck is the ducks are amazing. It's fun. It gives you a sense of more purpose like for your vacation. Seek. It's like an Easter yes. egg hunt. It's like an Easter egg hunt, yeah. but they're for ducks. Adults. So and kids. Kids are obviously doing it too, but a lot of adults participate. And when you find the ducks, you're either you're to post a picture that hey, I found one of you guys ducks, or re rehide the duck. So it's up to you. I kept all my ducks last time. Maybe not this time, but I kept all my ducks because I want to have a duck collection and I always remember that I found these ducks on a carnival in Mardi Gras. Mm -hmm. And I had just left the celebration and didn't search for not one duck. Yeah, we really just we found just our first it. duck on the last cruise because we weren't looking for them in the past and we realized how fun it was to oh, participate in. So this time, our next cruise, we got tags specially made for Carnival Horizon with Boom and Bigs. Like this, this is on there. Yes, we and have this on that there. way people can scan the QR code and get to our YouTube channel and see videos that we make of the cruise that they're on. So, and if you're on our cruise, this is gonna be on our door. Yeah. It's a little bigger than the door. Yeah, I think I may have got it printed a little too big, but... But we're going to put it right next to the door. Yeah, technically you're not supposed to put anything next to the door, but we'll see. Next, I just wanted to say that we didn't talk about what to pack in this video because we actually have another video on Cruise Essentials to pack. So definitely check that out if you want to know about little tips of things to bring to make your cruise more enjoyable. We have a lot of packing tips in that video that would make this video just too long. But here we do want to mention some of the things to not bring with you. I'm gonna make a whole video on that as well because it's a lot of things that are not allowed on the cruise. Some exceptions of what you can bring and then things that you can bring but only use at the port. So I want to do a whole video just on that. But for this video, let's just mention a few things that are not allowed. Okay, I'm gonna just go over this little list that they have here, just a few things. Okay, most of us, we're adults. We know right from wrong. We know what we can and not cannot bring on a cruise ship. We know we can't bring explosives, knives, handcuffs, no candles. There are no fire is allowed in any rooms or balconies, no fire. No narcotics or drugs. No narcotics or drugs. Weapons, ammunition, explosive fireworks, you know. It say alcohol, but you can bring wine. So Yeah, one bottle per person of wine. So Um, no um monster drinks, stuff like that. Energy drinks, it's not allowed. And, you know, the basics, scissors, knives, all those things like that. She's gonna make a video later. That goes more in depth about. Yeah, that. So check back bring. for that video. One thing is don't bring a steamer or an iron. A lot of people don't know this and have had their iron or steamer confiscated. A lot of people this happens to. Yes. So instead, some of the ships have ironing rooms that you can go iron all of your stuff, or you can send your clothing off with 
the laundry service and have it pressed, especially if it's what you're going to be wearing for your elegant night or something like that. You can also bring the downy wrinkle release if you're worried about wrinkles and try that as well. But don't bring an iron or a steamer on with you. Also, a do not is don't try to fish off the boat. Because there's a video where a couple, a guy, a couple just got banned for life for fishing off the side of a carnival ship. And they were banned for life. So please don't try it. Yeah. It's that not is, worth it. No. And another thing you can get banned for life for is marijuana. So yes. bringing it, smoking it. Having it in your brownies, any of that. And I know that they are getting more strict yes. on this. They're having more police presence at the ports with dogs. They're sniffing for it. They are banning people for life from Carnival Cruise if they're caught with it. And this wasn't the case always. Because we've been on plenty of ships where all you smell is weed the whole time. And there's people in the smoking area smoking. And nobody really cares. So... You may have been on a cruise before or tried bringing some and been fine, but now they're really cracking down on it, so just, just don't do it. Things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, they're cracking down on the marijuana smoking. Um, just because it's legal in your home state, I understand how you feel, but it's not legal on the ship mm -hmm. and in international waters. So keep that in mind and... Have a few more drinks, get the package. <laughs> yeah, and it's a $500 fine as well, so. Or banishment. Or both. Or both. Well, so you're like, arrested. You could also get arrested. Yeah, you could get a charge. So, like, you don't know what your consequences are going to be. So, yeah. just take that like into when account. you get caught with it. Like, if you're at the port and it's actually a police. Customs are going to be the one like, to catch you. You might get arrested. If you're on the boat and security... They might take it from you. You might get banned. You might get a fine. They might not arrest you. I, I don't know. It just depends on. I'm pretty sure guys. that they, if it's, if you're leaving from Florida and marijuana is illegal in Florida, you're going to get a charge if you're caught with marijuana entering, trying to get on the boat. You're getting a charge. If you're on a, in a state where it's legal and they find it, you probably won't get charged. They just confiscate it. But. On the boat, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So, you know, to each his own. But the, we're just warning you that they are really cracking down on marijuana. It used to be a lot lean, more lenient. But now, even there's a video that the president made about how much they're cracking down on it. So, mm -hmm. just something for you to think about. Yes. Yeah, so, while we're talking about smoking... You can smoke cigarettes on the ship, but it's only in designated areas, which is usually one side of the ship on the outside and certain areas of the casinos. Yes. Normally they split up the casino, like you can smoke over here, you can't smoke over there. And um, smoking on balconies are prohibited. Yeah, any no type way. of fire or anything in or outside of that cabin is prohibited. Yeah. So, um, and they're real serious about it. Mm -hmm. And there are cameras everywhere, so don't think no one can see you. So just be, be, you know, just they got places for you to smoke. Yeah. I, I used to be a smoker, yeah. and I used to get up in the morning and go to the not to smoke in the section and smoke. I mean, it's not that bad, but I know how some people want it right now. So remember. Right now, it could get you never back on the boat again. So, On every Carnival cruise ship, there is a casino. We have enjoyed spending a lot of time at the slot machines throughout the several cruises we have taken. And they have a rewards program. So when you're gambling, use your sign and sail card and you can earn points as you're gambling to earn things like free drinks and great deals and even free cruises. We have actually saved thousands more dollars on cruises that we have received or deals that we have received on cruises from gambling than 
money we've lost in the casino. So for us, it's been really worth it to earn those points and get those great deals. We have had some amazing offers, free cruises where you only pay the gratuities and taxes and port fees, and you get some onboard credit and some free casino play all the way up to a thousand dollars on board credit. And that is money you can use anywhere on the ship and also put in the slot machine, then go to the counter and cash out the money and have it as cash. So in those cases, sometimes we've even walked away with more money than we paid for the cruise. So we made money to cruise those times. But of course, it does not always work out that way. So gamble at your own risk and never gamble with more money than you can afford to lose. Debarkation. Yep. Time to go. It's over. Yep. Had a great time. Can't wait to do it again. Yep. Usually on debarkation day, everyone gets off the ship in the morning. We're ready to get off as soon as possible because you got to get off that day anyway. We're ready to get in our car and drive home. So we like to get off as quickly as possible. You do have two options. If you're able to carry off all of your luggage, you can do self-assist and you can get off earlier than the other people. You can just, when they call you, just roll all of your stuff off, but make sure you can actually handle all of your stuff. So the other option would be to check your bags and have them bring them downstairs for you. In that case, you have to have them ready the night before with the luggage tags on them. And you'll have to wait a little longer to get off. When you get off, you go and you find it just like you would at an airport. You go find your bag and then go to your car. If you live where the port is in that, that city, maybe you're not in a rush to get off the boat. Maybe you want to drag it out and, and take your time. But yeah, um, just remember, if you got a lot of luggage and you got to carry it off the boat and you're going to be in these lines behind people, you might want to check it the night before. Yeah, we've been liking to just roll it off. And for us, rolling everything off is easier than getting it on. Yes. And that's, I guess, because the ramps are down to get off the ship, so you're not having to pull it up the ramps on the gangway, you're pulling it down, all the escalators and stuff are down. It just seems easier to go off. So, debarkation. The night before, if you've purchased liquor and stuff like that, they're gonna bring it to your room, so you're gonna have, remember all the things that you've purchased, like liquor and stuff like that, they're gonna bring it to you. So those are other things that you're gonna have to pack. Let me ask you, do you have anything you want to declare? Make sure you have all your documents mm -hmm. when you get to customs. You're going to need your passport. They got a smile and go thing. I, I've never used it. She used it before. Um, they're yeah, going to need you to see your... passport, all you do is stand in front of the camera and it knows you're good to go. It matches you with yeah. your passport. I don't really like that whole like face recognition technology, but it is what it is. If, not, if you don't, if you're using... A, birth certificate and identification, you're gonna to have to go over to customs, go through there and show it to them. They're gonna ask you that anything you wanna declare. Mm -hmm. No, I'm out of here. And they send you on your way, so. Yeah. Make sure you got all your stuff together to go through customs and, and have a wonderful, safe trip back home. Yeah, and in case you didn't know what he was talking about, about the liquor, there are shops on board for shopping, and there is a liquor shop, which you can get alcohol duty-free and usually less than you can on land. So people like to buy liquor there, but you can't drink it while you're on the cruise because you're cutting into their money. One of Carnival's biggest money makers is you buying alcohol from them in drinks while you're on the ship. So... You don't get it actually until your last night. And you can drink it on your last night. I've done that in the past where I knew I was going to get the alcohol on the last night and drink it there. So that's also an option. Also, we didn't speak about the shops on the ship. Yeah. There are shops on the ship. There are stores on the ship. Like, like a you, mall. Like you can buy a lot of stuff on the boat. Yeah. It's like a little mini mall. Yeah. So you can buy watches. You can buy jewelry. Um, you can buy clothing, you can buy bags, you can buy all kind of 
memorabilia from the ship you're on. So there are a lot of shop, there are a lot of shops on the um, on the boat for you mm -hmm. to to look around and browse around. And they have sales. They have T-shirt sales. Like you might go out one day and it's four for twenty five. You'd be like, what? Yeah, <laughs> you know, so, so don't buy it the first day. So like, remember the first day, you're gonna get a deal if you get a spa deal. Yeah, that's true. And they're gonna try to sell you these, 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 these deals, but they offer deals the whole time. Like if you look on your itinerary, you're gonna see such and such and such deals today, such and such and such deals today. So remember, those t-shirt deals are gonna be coming. Like those last two days. Oh, you're going to get deals on any of those t-shirts. But think about it. They might not have your size by the end. So yeah, that's true. Uh, if you want to pay full price. Now, certain things aren't going on sale. The carnival hoodies. Yeah. The, the, the carnival um, cups. A lot of the carnival memorabilia is not going on sale. But the t-shirts will. So remember, you can get t-shirts real cheap. Yeah. Other than that. There's probably more things that we could talk about, but at the moment, this is it. Yes. Thanks for subscribing to Boom and Bees. Yes, thank you guys so much for watching. This was so much fun sharing this with all of you. Please let us know in the comments if you have any other questions that we could answer for you or put in a video, make a video about. We love talking about cruising. We love cruising and... We're so excited to keep making more videos like this, so definitely subscribe and check back for more. Thanks for watching.